Whew. Hello. <laughs> it's hot in here. <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of IVF Daddies, uh, where today you're going to talk to me, Richard, and... Julio. And it's hot in here, so I'm sweating. He's already sweating and we haven't actually asked him any questions yet. Anyway, um, today we're actually going to talk about something that was very interesting that came up from one of the previous podcasts. If you were listening a couple of weeks ago, I was in Greece and I was there for the christening of a godchild of mine. And her mother, Emilia, asked me back in the day uh, if I would donate sperm. And I said no for different reasons. Um, but the that sparked a couple of DMs to us. And we wanted to talk to you about what the options are if you need a sperm donor or you're going down that route. Um, obviously, I didn't need a sperm donor for my family. Um, but I mean, it's not necessarily obvious. Like some people, you've mentioned before, there have been patients. What if you're a cyclist or a sport person? It's not obvious that just because you're a man. No, but from my family, we've spoken about the fact that I did my sperm deposit that's and true. all those different things. So that, that's, that's what I meant. Um, but you're very right. Like we, we spoke about to Cheryl Homer about how some men don't have sperm and what does that mean? Um, and it was very interesting, actually, because one of the things that I'm not so up to speed on is reality TV. And that's all I know about. <laughs> Pretty much. But the fact that the, the important part for me to reality TV is, is vulnerability and is real time and is also part of what we're doing, which is cultural positioning. And it's very interesting that in two of the most popular reality shows, which is Vanderpump Rules and The Kardashians, we get to see a little bit of cryobank. Yeah, we did with the California Crybank. Um, so there was the one that's based in LA where there was um, the lady who went in to have her family, right? She wants to get sperm. Yeah, there, there was, so Lala from Vanderpump Rules, she did a party about having her friends over to choose the sperm donor. She went through it. But like my, what I want to touch based on is the fact that we're empowering people, right? We're empowering people, we're empowering women. We want women to have their career, their success, which is in part what we do with egg freezing. Uh, the whole point of you freeze your eggs is so you can succeed at your career and you can do everything. And then when you want to have a family, you can do it. And then in these two episodes, we see Lala that she went through a divorce and then she had a baby and then she wanted to have a baby. So she decided to go through a sperm donor. She's been traumatized for her marriage. And to me, the important part is that it still look frowned upon. Yeah, it was really, I watched the episode, which is not something I'd normally do, but I watched the episode and it was interesting that certain people were almost stigmatizing the fact that she wanted to go and choose sperm from, from a sperm bank. And that to me was just, it, it was wrong. I didn't like that. And, and again, it's back to that empowering people to be able to do what they want for their family. And it, it, it's one of those things that I just think that a lot of people do. They're like, you want to do what? No. You're going to choose sperm from a catalog. I'm like, why? Why not go, oh my gosh, that's amazing. How can we support you in that? I know. And the, my question is, what is the issue? Is the issue of women being mothers alone or is the issue of a woman or the fact that somebody donated sperm and it's looked like a homeless person did it because i remember back in 2014 my first contact reality tv again is uh on real Housewives of atlanta which is uh real funny because we interviewed uh shadina that is also from the real Housewives of atlanta and but there's an episode of phaedra and Kenya, when Phaedra says to Kenya, you're going to a sperm bank because uh, that person, all they needed was a slice of pizza so they can ejaculate it in a cup. And that is like a put down of, you don't know if it's a child molester or whatever. And that to me makes me feel like, what is the issue? Is it issue of a woman trying to have a family alone or is it issue of 
a woman going to choose the sperm donor? Because I feel like we've normalized egg donors. Right. Slightly more than. But again, I think it's that ignorance. Ignorance isn't stupidity. Ignorance is you don't know any better. So for somebody to say, oh, you know, they got $10 to ejaculate in a cup and they might be an axe murderer. A lot of people probably think that. But when you're working with sperm banks, so California Cryobank or any of the others that, that, that are out there, they're going to do background checks. They will do that. They will make sure that that donor is who they say they are. They are, they are genetically tested. They are STI tested. They go through all of the same things that one would expect from an egg donor to make sure that from a, from a human level, they are an appropriate donor. So I think that was a bit disingenuous to say that. But again, a lot of people think it. So yeah. does it make it right or wrong? I don't, I don't know. But I think it's coming back to that conversation of, well, who cares? At the end of the day, if that's how you want to form your family, let's support you in that. Well, to me, that who cares is the person that is thinking of doing it and not going through because they don't know where to start. Right. And because the internet can be overwhelming and because they know they're not going to get support from their family. So the beautiful thing about these episodes is they are accepting to have the show and the clinics are accepting to be exposed to normalized uh, alternative route of building a family. And uh, it's really interesting that it's the same company on, on both shows. But what I see in the second episode was when Chloe goes with Malika to the cryobank and they're going through the catalog, even though it's put in the lightest light and the most positive way. And they're very happy that of this road of making a family. You still see that you hear the people from the clinic saying this is not plan A, this is not plan B for most people. So is back to the last resource. Well, what for me was really interesting in watching that clip where you've got the Kardashian talking to her friend. Um, the friend was sitting there and she cried. She was overwhelmed. Again, it's back to that. You just, you're given this information. And again, it's like, it's almost like it sideswipes you. And you just, it comes back to that step of, this is not what I was thinking in my life. This is not what I was wanting. But the upside, and this is what, what Chloe, Chloe. Chloe said, she was like, it's okay. You know, we're here to give you optionality to make sure that you know that you've got this. And it might not have been plan A or B, but it was C or D. And it comes back to, you know, you'll end up with a family one way or another. It may not be the one you thought you were going to have, but the options are there. But it's really funny because Chloe has two kids and the first kid with uh, the person in the relationship, the second kid, she wanted to be genetically linked. And after having the affair and all the scandal, she used an embryo that is the same father and the same mother so they can be blood related. That, it was almost seen fine, but then going to a sperm bank as a woman. So back up. So she has a baby with a donated embryo. No, she, okay. So she was dating this basketball player and then she wanted to have a baby. So they have a baby. And then he started a whole affair while she was in the delivery room. The affair came out on the internet and then they broke up. She gave her a second child because he's the father of the kid. And then she wanted to have a second kid and they did it on, through a surrogate. And she was talking about, how uncomfortable it was for her. For Kim wasn't, but for her it was really uncomfortable to have her first child carried and the second one through a surrogate. And then, but they don't talk about the, the taboo of, of having the baby through a surrogate or an embryo. And then when the friend is going to the sperm bank, it's still almost like, let's just educate ourselves in this. But I guess it comes back to the fact that it's not you. She's not in a relationship with the person that donated sperm. 
And some people can't get their heads around that because I guess Chloe had embryos with her ex. They used, because you have to make embryos to put them into a surrogate. Yeah. Right. Because that was actually one thing that I remember talking to a parent about. He, when he was pre-child, he was like, I don't want to have sex with my surrogate. And I was like, you're not going to. We're going to make the embryos in the lab, your sperm, your wife's egg. We're going to make the embryos and then we'll do a frozen embryo transfer and put that in. That is like handmade style. It, well, but that's, I think that's a different story. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I think people can wrap their heads around the fact that you are in a couple and you're in a relationship and you're doing that. But if you're single and you have to go down the egg donor route, the sperm donor route, that's a step further that a lot of people can't quite fathom. And I think to your point, egg donation has now become normalized to a point. Sperm donation hasn't. Yeah, it hasn't. Unless it is because in New York, you get to see a lot of, like I was in the photography industry, in the fashion industry, you get to see a lot of donors, a lot of models, male models being sperm donors to make extra money. And then I was hearing on the episode that there was such a, something like elite or platinum or like, because I know you have three contracts for egg donors. You have a uh, con con contact or no contact, but this, like, do you have elite donors uh, a sperm and egg as well? I think it depends where the sperm donor is coming from, but for certain sperm banks, you've got the, uh, plat I think it's called platinum, which is where that sperm donor is only for you. Oh. Because if you think about it, when you ejaculate, they can take that sperm and put it into many different vials and we can ejaculate every... Or you can go to different banks. Or you can go to different banks. I mean, exactly. There's no one registry for sperm donors, nor is there one for egg donors. So if a sperm donor comes to me and says, hey, I'm only going to work with you, there's nothing stopping them going to another sperm bank and leaving sperm deposits there. Right. So you're signing up for a platinum sperm donor that will only deposit in this clinic and they will only give that to you. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. But you've got to go with faith a little bit to say that they've been educated, this is what they're doing. And I think with things like 23andMe now, you can find out. But again, that's after the fact that you find out that the sperm donor that was only for you now has donated 17 times and how you have children all over the world right well i mean but that's like with anything like yeah. you know there's people that have siblings from like after the family died or something or just families appears and things like that so that wouldn't worry me but what i did notice is that you can get to see pictures of them when they're younger not when they're, they're adults again that depends on the database there are some that have adults but mostly it's just children okay. up to like the age of two so I would, like to, uh, like, I would like to ask you a question. When you first heard that I wanted to talk about this, what was your thought process after when I showed you the clip and I told you my perspective? That as much as I'm an expert on sperm, I'm not an expert on sperm donation. And that it's, it's a very new realm to me of a topic that isn't, is, I don't feel like I'm a professional at, if that makes sense. Because um, the, most of the people that I talk to are gay men who have sperm and they need an egg donor. And then after I show you the clip? I kind of want to do more, to learn more about it because it's just, it's another part of the puzzle where I think people are disempowered and I don't think that's fair. Yeah, because to me it was, so there's a whole part of like the celebrity uh, stigma of uh, having uh, babies through IVF and surrogacy but then there's a whole other part of what about these other people that just want to have a family or want to have kids and they don't have a partner or their partner is not capable of producing the proper sperm I just want to make sure that I we can help people to have that small step to the right direction that is okay that there's nothing wrong, that they're not like, all ex convicts or homeless people, they ejaculate in a cup for 10 bucks. And also when you're doing sperm donation and you're using that route for a family, 
you don't need to go through IVF. You don't have to have the embryos created in a clinic. You can buy the sperm and do the old-fashioned turkey baster method. Like the FDA-approved thing that they, they did, there's a... Uh... I did a video on TikTok about it that they approved a turkey baster FDA, not a turkey baster, but they approved an FDA thing that you just get the sperm and inject it in your hoo-ha. <laughs> I swear to God, is I'm not making fun of it. You inject it in your hoo-ha. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about. Like, but, uh, no, I know what you mean by injecting the hoo-ha. I don't know what... what so there is there is a company, I'll put it like... I'll put the watch my TikTok video. I'll, I'll talk about it later. But there's a company that created a, a prescribed like you can buy it in a pharmacy. Okay. Because I remember having a lesbian friend asking that they want to have a baby with her lesbian girlfriend and then I said to them, Well it's easier like that because you can just get the sperm donor and you can or you can get a relative sperm or whomever and then you can just do it at home. Yeah, there's. It's called IUI. Maybe but, but, well, no, 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 no. I I don't know if that's what you're talking about. IUI is intrauterine insemination, which is where you basically have a syringe and you inject the sperm into the uterus. Well, there is a brand I remember because the first time I saw it was with Laura Shaheen. Yeah, and then I talked about it. Okay, I would love to have her in the podcast. I know, right? Laura, Doctor Shaheen, you're next. Oh, sorry, Doctor Shaheen. She's the doctor. They study for a long time. I know. It's insane. Yes. Um, but anyway, so you're next. But um, yeah, I don't quite know what that is. But yeah, you don't have to go through IVF. to. You can buy sperm and inject it at the right time of your cycle. And it's, you time your cycle and, and you uh, re egg is released and you do that. Obviously, the success rate from that, if you think about it, IUI, you're, it's almost like your body is ovulating. So it's going to be one egg. Whereas if you do IVF, they're going to try and take all of the eggs because you're injecting the medications, remember? Yeah. So if you inject the medications, you're going to get all of the eggs in that month. And in the lab, they're going to take the sperm and inject it into the egg to make an embryo. Whereas if you're doing IUI, you, your body releases it naturally. Yeah. It's traveling down the fallopian tube and hoping to find sperm. So the, the probability of success is lower in, in the, the turkey based uh, injection method versus IVF, which is higher. But of course, it's, you're doing IVF, so it's going to be much more expensive. Like, do you buy like a bat that you can just use multiple times, or do you buy like a one and then buy again? You buy vials of sperm. So, in when you ejaculate, they're going to take it and put it into small vials, and you buy one, two, three, four, five, however many vials there are. So, is the price per vial or a price per, price per success rate? Per vial. This vial. It's vial. Yes. Um, but wow. yeah, because you buy a vial, it might not work. So then you have to buy another vial. And then mm. what if that vial runs out? And then you have to go back and say, hey, can you again, please? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, yeah, I is the same as the, I heard through the DMs of people telling me that they've gone, they froze their eggs and they used all their eggs and they didn't work and they have to go through an egg donor. Yeah. So I guess it will be on the same aspect of it. So yeah, nothing is a guarantee, but it's a different route. And my goal is to just make sure that it's okay. Don't, there's no need to make people feel bad if they just want to go get a sperm donor. I think that to me was really interesting. Watching those two clips back to back, you had one where I felt somebody was being um, almost belittled or put down because that's what they wanted to do. And that was in the um, Lala and that the vulnerable Lala, moments. and I felt I felt really I felt quite sad for her. Actually, she cried. Yeah, I felt really bad for her because that was something she was desperate to do and desperate for the validation in, in from her friends and what she was doing. And then when somebody was like, "Yeah, you," I I felt that in my core. And then you flipped to Chloe. And the positivity that she was giving and the, this is, it, it, it was, it was like night and day. Yeah. And I think that again comes back to why we're doing this. It's that positivity to know that there are options that we're here to help. That if you don't know, come to us, we will do what we can. Even if we don't have the answers, we know who to ask. And I think that after watching that, I was a lot more heartened 
and I never thought I'd say this, but I was actually heartened watching a Kardashian episode going, wow, that was really amazing. And Keep I, I know, up. I know you. this is your life. <laughs> I mean, they are amazing, and they've been talking about it uh, for years. They're all hot. They basically invented IVF and surrogacy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Cher invent, invented audio tune. They invented IVF and surrogacy. But, I mean, yeah, with the lala, especially, like, if you're a mother and you're a mother of one and something happened to the father or your babies or whatever, and you, her statement was, is something that I'm really good at is it being a mom. Don't let anyone take that away from you. Call us and we'll be here to support you and give you that. All you need is that one person to encourage you. And then that brings me to a topic of that we just came back from Paris and we had dinner with amazing group of doctors, IVF doctors. And I touched on a topic that I thought it was going to be more controversial, which was the hyperbaric chambers and the Ozempic babies on the rising. And the doctors were like, oh yeah, definitely. Like, of course it works. Like it totally makes sense. And then we're like, I thought it was going to be just provoking at the table and i was like oh completely my. deflated He's like let's get an argument going and they were like yeah and then yeah the whole point is if you reduce inflammation you have more chances of success rate and yeah. hyperbaric chamber doesn't mean that it's going to make you have a baby but it means that when you have your cycle or when you have a like it helps you reduce inflammation inflammation the same as with ozempic so that to me was something that I'm glad they were doing that. It was really interesting because it was quite funny watching you going, oh, and another topic. And they're like, yeah, yeah, no, we know about this. It increases the oxygen, the hyperbaric chambers, increase the oxygen in the system. And it just, there has been FDA studies and all these different things. We, it, we know it. We know these have happened, not FDA studies, but we know that these things happen and it's worked. Um, I think the Ozempic thing is maybe a little bit too early to go through, but to your point of... Anything that's reducing inflammation, anything that is reducing the things that stop a pregnancy being successful, it, it's going to work, right? And I think, I, again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know the downstream implications of all these things. But if it's working, that's a good thing for those people that have been struggling. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> Hyperbaric chambers, let's keep going. Let's do it. Let's do I still want to do it. I want to see what how I feel. Yes, because we're going to do, we're going to keep going after the podcast. There's a whole other realm of questions, of course, that people started to ask. And I wanted you to see the side of it that is more closer to the clinic. And probably you will have better understanding than I do. And then we can do that. Well, thank you for listening. And uh, please do like, subscribe, comment, DM us. We love that. Um, Thank you very much for listening. And let us know, what do you think? What What is your point on sperm donors versus egg donors? Would you be okay supporting a friend or as if you're a woman or want to be a mother, would you be okay with going through a sperm donation or supporting somebody with sperm donation? Give us your comments. Thank you. IVF Daddies. <laughs>